our series on Windows Server 2012, we'll be looking at some Windows Server 2012 R2 functionality uh, as it relates to Microsoft's private cloud. Now Microsoft takes a position of providing a continuum of cloud solutions from the on-premises or private cloud to Windows Azure, which is the public cloud offering. So the differentiation fundamentally between the two systems is that on-premises solutions are now being built on Windows Server 2012 R2 and they use the System Center 2012 R2 family to provide layered services on top of them whereas Azure itself the public cloud offering is built on a different set of, of components and specifically on, on Windows Azure as a base platform. In the on-premises solution, we'll be talking about a solution set called the Windows Azure Pack. Now this is a layered set of services on top of Windows and System Center, the 2012 R2 versions of them, and really they're, they're implemented to provide an Azure-like experience for on-premises solutions providers that are providing resources to internal tenants if it's an on-premises private cloud solution or out to an external audience if it's a service provider. They effectively take and extend upon the functionality provided by the System Center family so they provide all of the same services that we are typically familiar with when we think about System Center uh, running on an on-premises solution. They also provide an additional experience for the administrator and the user who in the case of the administrator need to configure the private cloud solution and for the consumer need to be able to consume the services that the private cloud solution offers. So there are there are in effect two portals that we'll be working with as we go through this. So the Azure Pack again on-premises Built on that foundation of Windows Server and currently the version that we'll be talking about is 2012 R2. The benefit here is that we still consume all of the services that we've talked about in previous discussions, uh, including ODX, so offloaded data transfer if the platform supports it, unmap operations if you're deploying thin devices, and even SMB3. So these are fundamental features in the Windows platform and because the on-premises solution uses the Windows platform then where they're available they will be consumed by the system. And System Center equally is used in the platform and so all of the automation and provisioning services that happen as a part of the Windows Azure pack will be deployed through Virtual Machine Manager if it's an infrastructure as a service or a virtual machine into the inf infrastructure and even through Orchestrator by the provisioning of runbooks and those runbooks are serviced up into the Azure Pack platform um, and so they can be consumed in that environment as well. And of course we continue to want to look at the eventing and alerting that we have always had with products like System Center Operations Manager. So when something happens, the administration team needs to be advised of um, potential impact in the environment. And so that continues to be offered in this platform. At EMC, we, we have surrounded our storage systems with services and ways to interact with them. I think traditionally most people are familiar with the CLI solutions, so the command line interfaces that are available on a given platform. They are very good at what they do, but in the Windows environment where we want to provide automation and abstraction of these operations, we really need to provision a, a method to get PowerShell into that environment. And so what we've done is we've layered on top of some of those services a set of solutions called the EMC Storage Integrator or ESI that provides integration into some of those system center environments and even provides a set of PowerShell commandlets that can be used to initiate certain activities against the managed storage system. 
We also have solutions like the SMIS provider, so a standards-based management infrastructure that allows platforms like Windows to consume services. Here we actually see what is probably the most commonly discussed item, which is System Center Virtual Machine Manager. Now, SCVMM has a direct integration with SMIS services where it can provision and automate certain activity directly to the storage infrastructure where an SMIS provider is present. So these can alleviate some of the more common requirements that customers have in those environments. But through SMIS, we also light up a whole set of scenarios outside of just System Center, and we actually provide them through Windows Server itself. So within Windows Server, there is a feature called the Standards-Based Management Service that can be enabled and can consume SMIS services. So through Windows Base PowerShell, when you have the standards-based management feature enabled, you can talk directly to an SMIS provider and you can interact with the storage system provision runs and present them to hosts, etc. Um, probably more on that in another webcast at some point. We also provide integration through System Center Operations Manager. Again, this is going through our EMC storage integrator service and getting a lot of the events and alerts and passing them into that infrastructure so that IT staff can get a comprehensive view of the system and its availability at any given time. We also provide functionality through ESI into System Center Orchestrator. So Orchestrator is where you can create run books and we have an integration pack so you can plug in various components into any given run book and set up a, a way to automate um, certain workflows that occur a great deal. But fundamentally we surround Windows and System Center with a number of ways to integrate and it really is to enable these private cloud solutions. And at the end of the day, it's all about consumption and the consumer is the customer that we really want to enable to do their job because they're running parts of the business. So in these models, IT staff can treat their own business units as tenants within the infrastructure. And, and as a result, they can create solutions. They can offer them up in the Windows Azure Pack Gallery, which we'll talk about and see shortly. And in this way, give their, their own customers the ability to do self-service management. So they will be able to select certain characteristics that they want in the environment and then have them automatically deployed um, without having to go back to the IT staff to ask for changes. Additionally, there is extensibility into the Azure Pack to provide more in-depth reporting. And in fact, one of the areas that a lot of customers are looking for is chargeback or usage information, and that's available by a third-party plugin. So again, the, the platform itself uses System Center and so it is fully extensible through the System Center family of products. So where there are extensions in the past, these can be continued to be used and enabled in the Azure Pack. So now we'll go and have a quick look at Azure Pack both from the administrator or the IT side as well as the consumer. Mm -hmm.